I'm Martin Clark. I run the uh, British Precast Concrete Federation. We're the trade body for manufactured concrete products. Um, I must acknowledge the presence here of Jim Toskus, who's uh, from the States. Jim runs the PCI, which is one of the world's leading precast concrete uh, organizations. And it's a great privilege to have you here, Jim, with your wife today. So thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the progress and, and the plans that we've got in UK precast. Uh, should take about 10 minutes. Of course, our own uh, uh, strategy and ambitions have been set by many of the same influences that you've heard about from uh, previous speakers. A whole array of uh, uh, governmental, of international, of industry uh, documents, strategies, policies have guided us and have, to some extent, compelled us. Uh, the roots of the precast sustainability program that I'm engaged on go back to the late 80s, the early 90s, and uh, where I first came across the German concrete industry's studies on ecological concrete, green concrete, if you like. Uh, the first article I wrote about sustainability and concrete was in Concrete Quarterly in 1994, which is uh, 18 years ago. Um, I mentioned earlier on that Jackie Glass was a, a PhD student at... Uh, British Cement Association. Um, Jackie was commissioned to write a publication called Eco Concrete in the late 90s. And that really was the first uh, sustainable concrete publication. The three pillars of British Precast were set as sustainability, innovation, and safety when I joined in 2002. And we've st stuck to those three pillars ever since. But at the time I joined, as uh, environmental uh, challenges were seen as a problem. They weren't really seen as an opportunity. And uh, we took the chance to appoint Hafiz al Haag as a PhD student here at Loughborough in 2003 to draw a link between sustainability and uh, profitability. Uh, there was a fear factor about sustainability. And I wanted to remove it because I knew that a practical and a disciplined approach, a rigorous approach to sustainability and best practice in running factories and um, installation operations and logistics, that if, if that was done rigorously, it would enhance the bottom line. And therefore, by taking a competitive lead in sustainability, there was more money to be made. And Hafiz did a great job within the flooring sector in drawing out those threads and getting the industry to change its attitudes and to embrace efficient design and sustainable practice. We also were transformed by the appointment of Ian Holton, who's, who was an engineering uh, doctorate with us for four years. Ian <coughs> played a great part in developing an industry strategy through research and through consultation, through the production of white papers, discussion documents, holding debates with members. Uh, Ian's now working out in industry and doing a great job. But we then uh, followed on from Ian's appointment with Abdullahi Alayu, who's up here today in the audience. Um, Abdullah is developing a product stewardship scheme. He's completing his uh, doctorate this year. So we've invested heavily um, in Loughborough with these three men and we're very delighted with that process. And in fact, the Loughborough University British Precast Access has been a, a key uh, relationship to us in the past uh, 10 years. 2007, we published our sustainability charter and we launched it here at Loughborough at a conference. And at the time, it was a voluntary charter, committed signatories to improvement in 14 different areas. Uh, and, and there is a copy in this uh, new document here of the original charter, which still continues as the charter. Um, we then started to publish uh, and collect KPI uh, information from 2008. We set targets to 2012. Um, we've set up forums and we have an auditing process. So our members that report data, and this is one of the keys actually, and Philippe touched on it, that data is um, audited. It's mandatory uh, that everybody that signs the charter has their data audited. And that helps in establishing credibility. Safety, and Philippe again touched on safety as being a very significant strand of sustainability. We've got a program that's been running since 2002 called Concrete Targets. We're now in the third phase of that scheme. Every five years, we re rededicate ourselves to reducing 
accidents and incidents by 50%. And uh, so far, we've had a 75% improvement in 10 years. So for every four guys that were <laughs> injured in an accident 10 years ago, there's only one injured now. Well, one is too many, and we're working as hard as we can towards zero harm as an industry. And that's our objective. Our biggest member, Aggregate Industries, has actually achieved that in its building products division for the last 15 months. Our largest member has had no reportable lost time incidents in 15 months. A wonderful achievement, and it's really set the benchmark for the rest of the industry to follow, and I pay tribute to AI for what they've done. We've rolled a lot of this thinking into a scheme called Raising the Bar, which uh, has been introduced across British precast. The idea is to upgrade standards, whether it's customer service, quality, sustainability, health and safety. Um, we want to raise the bar. We want to make it more difficult for the people outside who don't have our standards to operate. As a result of that, we've made the signature of our uh, health and safety <coughs> charter mandatory. Everybody must conform to be a member of our federation. We've had one member leave this year because they refused to sign it. Our sustainability charter will become mandatory in 2013. That is a major step for a trade body. Normally, you don't turn away subscriptions. You embrace money. We don't do that. We have, we've set standards, and uh, you've got to jump that hurdle to join us. Um, we're now looking at commitments to 2012. We, we've signed as a body in British Precast this important uh, strategic pledge, and we're encouraging our members to do the same. And we're going to set st uh, new targets to 2020 based on that strategy. Our own performance has been reported in uh, uh, this document, and I'm very, very quickly going to run through where we've got to. Carbon emissions, tick. We've achieved our target for 2012 by 2011. It could always turn upwards this year so I'm prejudging what next year's results are going to be, but it's a tick at the moment. On responsible sourcing, it's a tick. On the use of uh, cementitious materials as a replacement for Portland cement, it's a tick. But on the use of recycled aggregates, we've not yet got to our target. I'm actually not sure that we will. I hear what's said elsewhere by Jeremy, we have some uh, problems in increasing the amount of recycled aggregates in our precast concrete, uh, partly because of aesthetic demands on the final product, but also because of the content of product standards. And uh, that is an issue for us. So that's a, that is a cross. We're not getting there yet. On quality systems, on environmental management systems, it's a tick. On mains water reduction and groundwater reduction, it's a tick. It doesn't mean to say we're complacent. Really, a tick doesn't mean any more than just a tick on the way to a longer journey. And there's more, a lot more challenges to come. Those targets that we've signed up to as generic targets are a stiff challenge to the sector. And uh, water, of course, is a national issue. It's a world issue, a global issue. Um, you might not think so if you've been in Britain the last five weeks, but um, water was a criti in critical shortage uh, five or six weeks ago. On waste um, and the generation of waste, we've ticked the box. We ticked the box, in fact, some time ago. Most waste generated within a concrete products factory is now recycled on site and reused. And very little goes to landfill. Health and safety, we've reached our... Uh, accident and incident reduction targets and in terms of community liaison uh, we've reached that um, no, no convictions in 2011 I better explain that is to do with um, environmental legislation I'm sure one or two of our members have got convictions for something or other <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, we're, only, we're only actually measuring uh, uh, environment agency prosecutions essentially <coughs> So that's the story. I'm not going to go through that in detail, but you can read about it in the publication. Our Breast Practice Awards are being presented tomorrow. We have a big event in, in Leicester, which some of you are coming to. Um, and the small selection of entries here um, is no indication to who's won. So those of you that have put in an entry, 
This is not an advance notice that you've won anything. This is just a random selection of entries. Um, all the awards will be put onto BritishPrecast.org in due course. This is just to show those of you that don't know us the sort of things that we're doing as an industry. So here's a couple of um, environmental projects looking after the workforce and community relations. Brett Landscaping, a new garden for uh, primary school. Um, and the San Martins project uh, at Eagles Cliff from uh, Marshalls. Uh, there's another one with some kids messing about in the woods. I don't know if, uh, if you want to know more about that, David Morell will tell you all about it afterwards. Um, Brett Landscaping, tremendous project here at Pool, a training package on environmental impact, carbon and energy. Uh, Thermalite, um, part of the Hansen Group, um, a plan to reduce energy, energy consumption of a pre-curing transporter. Um, a modest project, I think the savings here are about two and a half thousand pounds, but you know, the thing about these awards is that everybody can learn something from them. Um, and, and this exchange of best practice and innovation is actually very good for the industry. Um, here's one from Marshalls, uh, a bit more impressive in sheer size, but a project with a capital cost of 26 grand and savings of 40,000. And it's about the reuse of warm air. Moving to uh, concrete construction and, and design, this um, uh, entry from Buckens is uh, the first zero carbon school in Europe. It's the Montgomery Primary School. I'm sure there is data on this, so we've just got to get the data and stick it on the This Is Concrete website. Uh, cross wall construction with 104 precast sandwich panels and tremendous thermal mass benefits. One, one of the big problems in running a school uh, in the UK is that in the, in the summer, uh, overheating can be a huge problem. And, and nobody these days wants to put in expensive air conditioning. So the, the designers of schools are finding that uh, concrete really is the key solution to keeping um, school children cool. And if you keep them cool, you keep them better behaved and they learn more. So it's a win-win. There's -win. Uh, just a couple of slides of this school going up and there'll be a lot more on the website after tomorrow's presentation. Uh, this is a project also from Aggregate Industries. It's the first UK uh, passive house project. Uh, pretty unique because uh, it was a hole in the ground. It was a, a, a borrowed pit really on the side of a hill. Uh, and I think the father of the architect who owns it actually gave the site to the family that developed it. But very interesting uh, construction, precast concrete panel construction and flooring. And um, quite a difficult sort of heritage barn to keep. It was a, a ruined barn and uh, instantly became a listed building, I think that barn. Uh, quite complex bit of construction. Um, so that's it for me. Those of you who are coming to Precast 2012, there'll be a lot more uh, like that. Um, I did consider giving you the full 200 slide presentation today. Um, <laughs> I actually went on a lecture tour of Australia talking about global uh, sustainability for concrete. And, um, but I'm more than happy to share that slide with anybody that wants it. Um, and uh, if you want to know more about what we're doing, follow us on Twitter, British Precast, underlined in the middle. So thanks very much. I will now wrap up and, s and move on to the final speaker.